Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Tucker, United States Air Force, retired. Kids, I love you so very much. I'm extremely proud of you. 
And I love the fact that you didn't just endure service alongside Melanie and I, but you embraced service as a part of Team Tiger to our great country. Thank you, and I love you so very much. I'm thankful that I grew up in a home that loved our country and elevated service. Mom and Dad and Stephen, thank you for being here and for your impact on my life. And I'm thankful that Melanie grew up in a home that loved our country and elevated service. Dad and Mary and Michelle and family, thank you for your impact on our lives. I'm so thankful that along the way I heard the gospel and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I'm so thankful that I've been able to live for Him and all of the blessings of my life are from Him. I'm so thankful for the spiritual leaders in my life. People like Pastor Chapel, Jerry Furso, Jerry Dunwitty, John Williams, Pastor Moore, Pastor Tyson, Pastor Humphreys, Pastor Mike, Pastor Wells. I'm so thankful for world-class leaders in my life who personally invested in me, that helped me see the power of being a servant leader, that helped me understand the power of impact on airmen and their families. People like Jello Robichek, Pulse Wills, Junior Summons B. Moose Dates, Don Dunlop, Trash Man Hicks, Sheriff Burke, Ty Izzano, and General David Wolfie. I'm so thankful that I've been able to serve alongside of command teams that have embraced and embodied genuine care and concern for airmen and their families. Chief Jones, Chief Perry, Chief Aishin, Chief Hubbard, and my vice commanders, Tom Rendell, Joshua Moore, and Barney Miller. I am so thankful for civilian leaders, community leaders, that have embraced the airmen in their communities and have allowed us to serve alongside of them and have supported us as we serve. People like Jimmy Stepp, James R. Stepp, Lisa Swoboda, Lisa Bolton, Al Howerton, Al Hoffman, uh, and others, and just the opportunity to serve in communities and serve my country. I'm so thankful for the people that put on this absolutely amazing ceremony, a world-class event. People like Bessie Adams, Master Sergeant Randolph, Sparky, Maya, Penelope, Roadrunner, the Air Force Honor Guard, the Joint Base Andrews Honor Guard, the Air Force Band, the 316th Wing, and especially the Protocol Shop and the MPW Protocol. The first Kelly for an amazing backdrop to the stage, and a hanger that is almost perfectly moving up. <laughs> I'm so thankful for those that played specific roles in the ceremony today. People like Rhino Carson, who sang our national anthem, and who inspires me by what he says, how he lives his life, and how you sing in honor of our country. I'm so thankful for Pastor Wells being my pastor, leading a thriving ministry on Capitol Hill called Graceway Baptist Church. I'm so thankful for Jacqueline Jamie Watts. My friend, a perfect woman through tough times, and somebody who is a true chaplain in the rear. I'm thankful for my long term friend, Chuck Plum, for being our host today. Thank you for modeling leadership that is based on character and principle. And I'll talk about Dimitri and I'll talk about Chief Perry here in just a bit. But I also want to say a specific thanks for a couple that's in the crowd today who joined us, they married off their son on Saturday. He retired from the United States Air Force yesterday afternoon, and they're here with us this morning. So Mason, Barb, Morrison, would you guys please stand and give me a round of applause. And I am so thankful for each and every one of you. During a busy Thanksgiving week, joining us being a part of Team Tiger Celebration. Those that are here in person, those that are watching online, we are honored by your presence and the time you're investing in us. And I am so thankful for how you have empowered me and us to serve under that oak that reflects that stunning document that embodies those remarkable principles. If you've been paying attention, you notice that there's a couple of things about today's ceremony that were a little bit different. It wouldn't be mine if it wasn't a little bit odd, and that's okay. But I'm going to explain, explain myself so you understand. First of all, you probably noticed that General Plummer didn't speak, but he deferred his remarks to two low-ranking members of our team. It's not that General Plummer didn't have things that he could have said about me. He's got plenty. But while it's always true 
true that there is a responsibility to serve up the chain, there is a sacred honor and responsibility to serve and support those who fall under your authority and fall under your command. And so I ask two stellar members of my previous teams to represent General Plummer in speaking on my behalf. And first of all, squadrons are the heartbeat of the Air Force. And there is no better squadron commander on this planet than Dimitri Lisa Mabin. She was absolutely stellar. Her team thrived under her leadership. Every time that she speaks, she's thoughtful, she's articulate, and thank you so much for the great words you had to say today. While squadrons are the heartbeat of the Air Force, enlisted members are the soul of the Air Force. Chief Perry was my wingman. We were a command team here for almost the entirety of my tenure at Joint Base Andrews. You're a role model to me and a friend and to everyone you come into contact with, officer, enlisted, civilian, contractor, family member, community member, and so thank you so very much. And it's always about supporting and serving those down the chain and up, and thank you for helping reflect that important truth. Number one, strange thing, the host deferred his remarks. Number two, you probably noticed and maybe have never seen someone take the oath of office as they're walking across the stage to leave their time in service in the United States Air Force. And it takes a bit of a story to understand the why and how. I've been privileged to be a long-term mentor for the previous two commanders of the Air Force demonstration team, the Thunderbirds. Thunderbird one there in Las Vegas and traveling around the world. And I dialed into the change of command in December, where Brick Caldwell gave up command and Astro Elliott assumed command. And Astro started talking about the power of brands, the personal brand, the corporate brand, the Thunderbird brand, and then he pointed to the large American flag behind him on the stage, and he started talking about America's brand. And he said this, if that brand starts to falter, you do not walk away. You engage with everything you've got and you fight to bring it back. And my purpose is to fulfill that challenge with my next stage of my life, to do my best to serve that oath and that stunning document and those remarkable principles in a far better, more impactful way in the next stage that I could in you. And I am not walking away. I am engaging with everything that I've got support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and I'm not quite sure what that is yet, but I look forward to the opportunity to impact as I did. I'm not negative about where we're headed as a country, but I have a burning passion to see us live up to those very lofty principles and to see all of us strive together to form a more perfect union. How could I be negative? I know we, the people, the last 28 years, every single day, I've gone to work with the best of America. I've come home to the best of America. I've socialized with the best of America. I've gone to church with the best of America. And as I'm looking out into this audience, I'm looking at the faces of the best of America. And as I consider your presence here today, as I think about those scattered around the world online, I am truly humbled honored, privileged, and blessed, but I am also powerfully hopeful. And in this next stage, alongside of Team Tigers, I look forward to engaging with everything that I've got to support and defend the Constitution of the United States.